Hey everyone, Travis here at the very end of the first day of the quarterfinals. I'm here with Quickshot, my first ever interview with him actually. Quickshot, you've been hosting the Analyst Desk. Now you are here in Busan before you guys were in LA. What's it like to actually be here, have the audience behind you and, and feel like the energy from the arena? Oh, it's very exciting. I mean, if you listen to the first post-game uh, replay from the team, we were just all buzzing and yelling. I think we were more excited than the audience. Yeah. But the volume, the energy, hearing the Korean fans scream TSM, it was, it was just really cool. Yeah. Uh, what is it like? Because you're, it's kind of your, your job to moderate all these uh, egos, I guess is the best way to put it. What is it like having to uh, you know, make sure that you can m move around and navigate everyone who wants to say so much? It's a lot of fun because we use the term personalities. <laughs> yeah. um, and everybody's got their certain quirks and they, their preferences when it comes to talking. So it's quite fun, but we've got a lot of mutual respect. You know, the guys know I'm the middleman between production and them, so sometimes I have to keep people flowing. Sometimes I gotta, you know, shut them down if they're running a bit long. Yeah. Um, it's a little scary because you don't always want to inter interrupt. You don't want to shut off somebody's points, but the show needs to go on. And, and that's really what I'm there to do, just keep the flow going in the right direction. Moving to today's games, what's it like for you guys? Because you, you have to do like analyst desk work on like that first and second game, and then all of a sudden like the third game happens where like suddenly TSM wins so strong. Uh, what's it, is it just like a jarring experience for you guys? Like, okay, now we have to shift gears suddenly to talk about TSM winning? Or, I mean, how does that turnaround happen for you guys? So it's really exciting because everybody actually wants that to happen. Everybody wants the underdog to win. Everybody wants the better story. Because at the end of the day, all of the analysts, all of the shoutcasters, we're storytellers, right? And the bigger, more exciting, more dramatic story gives you more to talk about. So it's something that we've talked about in length, off camera. Yeah. What are the possibilities? What if this? What if that? And when we start seeing those pieces come together, the important thing is just to really uh, get the crux of it. Like for us, fact of the matter is, Samsung White had a risky comp. You need to highlight the mistakes they made and also praise TSM. But the trick comes in trying to balance it, that you don't sound too excited it happened or you know, put too much blame on the bad decision because it's kind of a mix of all of the, the, the factors really. We, guys, or we get to see you guys uh, on camera like after each game. I've had in my experiences been, I've been able to watch uh, games with pro players and with different teams and casters during the game itself. It's always a funny experience to see people yell at things or just like talk about stuff. What's it like for you guys while the games are happening? Are you all talking or are you just like focused in on the games? How does that work? It depends entirely on the game. Um, Kaboom versus Alliance, yeah. we were jumping and screaming and yelling in either excitement or disappointment, depending on who it was. Uh, certain strategic games when lane swaps happen. I watched Monte Cristo, Crumbs, Double Lift, and Crepo argue and debate the merits of every single move from the lane swap to minions to jungle pressure before they all came to sort of a consensus. So we feel it and experience it exactly the same as everybody else. The difference is I don't get to enjoy it quite as much because while they're talking, I'm taking notes and I'm listening in. Who feels strongly about a particular topic? Who feels very strongly about a particular champion or player? And that's where I draw all of my direction in the pregame. Hey, you said this. Hey, you said that. While just listening in and taking notes and jotting down whatever I can as well. The backstory for a lot of us working at Worlds is the crazy travel that's happening. For those of us on the road through Southeast or through Asia, like, you know, we're all within oh, about the same time zone. I think one hour difference. You went from Europe to NA where you were staying, you're keeping these very strange hours. Now you're here has it just been like, uh, are you exhausted yet from the travel or is, are the games keeping you going? How, what's it like for you? So the show is definitely keeping everyone alive, yeah. but I'm not going to lie, the first couple of days were tough. Yeah. Uh, we were keeping Singapore time while staying in NA. We flew, it was about 21 hours in transit from LA to Busan, landed at about 10 p.m. and we had script calls and meetings the next morning at 9 a.m. already. So that, that was really tough, the, the transition. Yeah. But now actually is the first day this week and I'm starting to feel a bit more human. I'm acclimatizing to the Korean time zone and just the adrenaline rush from watching the games, it keeps everybody going. It's, it's what we're all here for at the end of the day. On, on the personal side, is it hard for you to like keep these weird hours? Like do you have a, a girl back home that you're like messaging or what's, what's it like for you just on the personal side? On the personal side, it has been a little tough. Yeah. You know, being on the road, I mean, we've, we left our respective homes, the entire European team, on the 9th of September. And we're on the 3rd of October already with another three weeks of travel to go. So everybody's feeling it. But 
it's also what we've all signed up for. You know, this is our job. This is our love for everybody on the team. So you just make the best of the situation. Luckily, Skype is a wonderful thing. And yes, you're thousands of miles away, but you're always a phone call away and FaceTime and all of that really helps. All right, so tomorrow, final question. What, what are you, predictions for tomorrow? You think that it's going to be around what we saw today or anything like that? Any ideas on maybe not like who's going to win or anything like that, but just what the games will feel like? I think the games will feel more like game four okay. of TSM versus Samsung White. I feel like if a team gets a lead, uh, either Samsung Blue or Cloud9 have it in them to dig deep. You go look at Cloud9 versus Najee White Shield. They dug real deep to you know, push Shield all the way. You go look at Samsung Blue in all of their group stage games. They were pushed pretty heavy into the late game by a number of their opponents. So I think game four would be a good taster. I think Cloud9 is stronger than... TSM, I think Samsung Blue is smarter than Samsung White. So game four, just better across all games. And my heart is hoping that Cloud9 can pull it out for, every, for the win, because I'm, I'm really, I actually think they can. Okay. We'll have to see tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Uh, you've, you've hyped me up just now. I know you're probably exhausted from the long day, so I will let you go. But thank you so much for the interview. Very good to talk to you. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of our coverage of all things Worlds at OnGamers.com.